Beneath the Planet of the Apes is the story of a survivor who comes down from the sky to find a tailor, and while in the midst of that, he stumbles across the village of apes, as well as an underground society, cult, whatever it is, run by telepathic humans. If that plot doesn't intrigue you, then good. I'm just going to say this right out the bat. This is a very, very disappointing movie. From the first one, we got a huge letdown. There are some redeeming qualities, though, uh, so let's talk about this movie. The only things I really do enjoy about this movie is most of its characters. Most of its characters are still strong uh, in this movie, hey, you know, are kind of flushed out and are interesting to watch, I guess. Um, we got a new character, Brent, who really did not interest me at all whatsoever. And the only other thing I can say that's good about this movie is its production design. It does look really good, uh, pretty much the same as uh, the first Planet of the Apes movie, which I did enjoy the protection design uh, in that movie as well. But like I said, this movie does have many flaws. This movie probably has one of the most least intense action scenes of all time. There's nothing to that. It, there's no sound whatsoever. It's just a few... <clears throat> And that's it. <laughs> it's not intense whatsoever. One of the worst action scenes, like, ever. And I also mentioned this, we got a new character, Brent, who's a huge step down from Taylor. Brent doesn't impress me at all. He's very uninteresting and just a dumb addition to the franchise, I guess. And also, this is a very strange movie. Once you get to see the stuff down in this underground society, cult or whatever, of telepathic humans, it gets really strange from there. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the movie just becomes weird. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's probably one of the most fast-paced movies I've ever watched. The movie's only 95 minutes long, and, it, and to me, it felt like 45 minutes. Uh, I still don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but as of right now, with all its flaws, it's probably a good thing. And the last thing I gotta mention is that there's a huge lack of characters. We hardly got any of the Cornelius and Dr. Zero, which I loved in the first um, Planet of the Apes movie. We hardly got any Taylor. Uh, we got Nova, but she was just kind of in the background. We had a huge lack of characters, and I did not like that at all. It just... Uh, this movie is one of the few movies where, right after it ended, out loud, I said, Wait, that's it? Again, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but the movie just kind of ends, and that's it. Overall, Beneath the Planet of the Apes is a very disappointing movie. I don't suggest checking it out, but if you're watching all these in preparation, if you're watching the Planet of the Apes movies in preparation for uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, give it a watch because it's kind of integral to the story, I'm guessing. We'll see. Uh, next movie is Escape from the Planet of the Apes, I think, but we'll see about that. I'm going to give Beneath the Planet of the Apes a very disappointing 4 out of 10. It's, de yeah, it's, it's very disappointing. Um, hopefully Escape from the Planet of the Apes does a little bit better. Uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.